Good morning and welcome to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, AM 1460, and online worldwide at WRUL.com. Cole Carter and Chris Myers with you. J.C. Tinsley, he's across the hallway getting us on the air. The Saturday Morning Sports Show is brought to you by Little Giant Grocery Outlet, Rice Motor Company, Hale Body Shop, Carmine Lumber Company, Pro Rehab, People's National Bank, Taylor Eye Care, Bush & Associates CPAs, Wabash General Hospital, Hamilton Memorial Hospital, Rush Appliance, Citizens National Bank, Nancy J. Winter CPA, Cherry Street Automotive, Southern Illinois Trading and Supply, First Bank, Expressway Ford, Slays Carpet, Farrell Hospital, Country Finance Representative Kyle Hosick, Wabash Christian Village, Invenergy, and Jansen Auto Group. It is a uh, busy day here on the show. A lot to cover. A lot has happened in the last seven days since you last heard from me and Chris. Chris, I don't know about you, but not having a game last night, Friday night, nothing to do. It was very weird in the Carter household. It's a weird adjustment. You know, it's just like, <laughs> no, football's not done yet. It's the playoffs. Yeah. It's just like, hey, Friday night, what are we going to do? Had some, had some fun. Had the grandkids over. <laughs> took go. them on a little haunted hayride, but I was still thinking, Wait, then shouldn't there be a football game right now? It's just, it just kind of throws you off. I love you know? Saturday playoffs, but yeah. it does it does kind of throw off the mojo a little bit. But yeah. uh, uh, the Bulldogs do play at home in the first round of the IHSA playoffs later on today at one o'clock. They'll take on Breeze Modern Day. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. I want to start today's show uh, by congratulating Chris Lucas and the Lady Bulldog volleyball team. Mm-hmm. Regional champs. They took down Newton in three sets back on Thursday, uh, 25-18, 20-25, and 25-20 to win their second regional title in three years. Chris, I know you've had a chance to see this team play a couple of times as well. They're fun to watch. They, they've had a really tough schedule, lost to some really good teams. Um, I thought they got a really good draw in the regional. Also got help that Newton took down the three seed Robinson, but Newton was still a handful as a six seed. Gave Carmine all they wanted. Lady Bulldogs prevailed. Got a big regional championship win. Absolutely, big congratulations to all those girls and Coach Lucas and finished, I believe, with a thirty and seven yes. regular season yes. record. I think that's the most wins, if yep. I was correct, mm-hmm. in a season. I mean. And the nucleus of this group, I want to say, is sophomores yes. and a few juniors. Yep. So I mean, they're they're just getting started. And you, you know, some of their down the stretch, every volleyball coach I know, my my wife coached at Grayville for years, and it just seems like the last week of the regular season leading into regionals is like a gauntlet. It yeah. seems like they play 150, and it was for the Lady Bulldogs last week. Five yeah. days, yeah, they probably played twenty some odd games. It seemed like, and uh, just. Did a real good job down that stretch. I know that's grueling, but to go in there and win that regional in Lawrenceville and setting up for the sectional, I know they're probably going to see Fairfield again at some point in a sectional. It's, it's very possible. Yeah, so uh, congratulations to those girls, and hope they can keep this postseason momentum going. Now you and me talked last Saturday. Uh, their schedule last week, not this past week, they played on Monday, played on Tuesday, had a JV tournament on Wednesday, and a lot of the varsity players do play yeah. JV. Uh, and then Saturday they went to Fairfield and played five games, a tournament brought home third place, had two Man. girls in ball tournament, come back on Tuesday and start regionals. That's, <laughs> I mean, a, a, that's a gauntlet. But, I mean, uh, you know, volleyball... You, you, it's it's not not like football where you're 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 pounding people yeah. and, you, and your body's sore. It's more like yeah. a cardio type deal, but still, right. uh, rest is needed. But yeah, it was a gauntlet. But able to come back in Lawrenceville and 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 defeat two really good teams uh, to win that regional championship. Also, another uh, record in that regional championship game: Caroline Simmons, who is just a sophomore. Shattered the school record, thirty kills in that win. Mm. Thirty. Wow, that's uh, that's unbelievable. Wow. Uh, and, and and you made a good point, Chris. This is a, a young team, only one senior, so mm. you got to think all the success they've had this year uh, is coming right back again next year. Yeah, so as far just, as they're just getting started, absolutely. You know? As far as what's next for Lady Bulldogs, they will take part in the Pickneyville sectional. They will play Massac County Monday at seven. Um, it is up in the air on if we will be able to cover that game. Going to make some phone calls with uh, Pickneyville High School. Uh, my goal is to be able to stream that one on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. Hate that I couldn't be there back on Thursday, but we're going to try our best to cover those sectional games next week if we are able to. Uh, but they will play Massac County Monday at 7. If they win that one, they will play the winner of Fairfield and Pickneyville in the sectional championship on Wednesday. And if you win that, it's off to the uh, super sectional, and then you're a win away from going to the state finals. So uh, Chris Lucas's Lady Bulldogs, man, what a season it's been, and a chance to add some more hardware uh, to their trophy case 
for this season. Uh, other regional championship matches that took place on Thursday evening around the area. In 1A, Carrier Mills defeated Century in three sets at the Gallatin County Regional. Norris City, they won another regional crown, defeating Cesar Valier in two sets at the El Dorado Regional. It was Trico defeating Edwards County in three sets at the Wayne City 1A Regional. Goreville took down Cobden in two sets at the Goreville 1A Regional. In 2A, Fairfield defeated Mount Carmel in two sets at the Hamilton County Regional. Massac County over Murfreesboro in two sets at the Massac County 2A Regional. And Pickneyville over Carterville in two sets at the Ducoin 2A Regional. So again, Carmi is in the Pickneyville sectional. Massac County on Monday and potentially a rematch with Fairfield uh, in Wednesday's sectional championship game. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. You, you get to those those big games, volleyball, basketball, those indoor sports where you're you got all those people crammed into those big mm-hmm. big gyms. It's it's exciting. Yeah, and I think the the fact that if uh, Carmi, if we can get to the sectional championship, say a rematch with Fairfield, yeah, you know, it's on a neutral court. I think that's you know that makes the things a lot different. Your home gym, you know, it is I haven't. Done a ton of volleyball over the years, but I've just noticed, the, the, like in basketball, the home gym makes a huge difference. So a neutral court, I think yeah. that, that kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Well, so, we've talked to Chris Lucas yeah. throughout the year, and, and you know, much like basketball, when you're playing those sports, you feed off the crowd, especially at home. And, yeah. and we've had great fan support. The girls have had great fan support home and away throughout the entire season. But you get you get the student section fired up, get mm-hmm. some students to make that long road trip to those games, and, and – uh, you can see the girls feed off that energy. Yeah, the, it's just those two sports, volleyball and, and basketball, you know, the fans are just right on top of you. You're packed into one area, and, you know, you're right, Cole, when that energy gets going, you get some momentum, and you, you feed off the home crowd. It, it, it really creates an advantage. So, you know, I uh, just hope the Lady Bulldogs are going to know they will. They're going to be ready to go and just wish them the best, best of luck in this upcoming sectional. If they are able to win the sectional, they will take part. At, they will play the uh, super sectional in Robinson. So not that okay. bad of a drive. If you're able uh, to get to the super sectional, they would play the winner of the St. Joe Ogden sectional. That would okay. be on Friday, next Friday, uh, November 3rd. So it could be a busy week for them, but uh, it's going to be tough. We, we've seen yeah. Fairfield. We know yeah. they're a handful, but obviously you got to get past Massac County first, mm-hmm. who is a really good team. It's, it's like... Coach Simon said last week, "There's no weak sisters when you get to no. this point in the season. No. It's 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 all yeah. teams that are a lot like you, dominant, uh, 25 plus win, 30 plus win teams. Um, it, it, they're going to be a handful. And, and I know yeah. Carmi, if they they come out to play, if they're capable of playing, they'll they'll win those matches. Yeah, sectional and volleyball is like the playoffs in football. I mean, it's there 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 is no doormats. It's all it's all heavy competition from that point forward." So, again, Carmi will take on Massac County Monday night at 7 o'clock in Pickneyville. Stay tuned to the WRUL Facebook page as far as information. If we're allowed to stream that, we're going to do our best to do so to allow fans that can't make the road trip uh, to watch that big sectional matchup on Monday at 7 o'clock. We'll take our first break of the morning. When we come back, we'll get you ready for today's playoff football game between Carmi White County and Brees Modern Day. It's a Saturday morning sports show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, AM 1460. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Sports Show here on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, AM 1460. Cole Carter and Chris Myers, J.C. Tinsley across the hallway getting us on the air. And again, want to extend our congratulations to Chris Lucas and the Lady Bulldog Volleyball Team uh, Regional Champions. They took down Newton in three sets at the Lawrenceville Regional back on Thursday. They will play in the uh, Pickneyville sectional next week. So best of luck to the Lady Bulldogs uh, in sectionals starting on Monday. So later on today, the Carmi White County Bulldog football team, they will host Breeze Modern Day in the first round of the IHSA football playoffs. Uh, that's a 1 o'clock kickoff. The Taylor Reich here pregame show here on WRUL will be around 1240. Uh, we'll get you ready for that one. But, um, you know, Chris, we, we said here last Saturday we were kind of unsure who Carmi would draw? You know, Breeze Modern Day was an option. Um, there were a couple of of, of uh, closer schools. Uh, Lawrenceville was a possibility. Uh, Vandalia was a possibility. But um, you know, I think given Breeze Modern Day, and, and we talked before the show, I think it's so tough to really tell 
how this team is because you know we don't see them very often at all on a rare a rare occurrence. But uh, they're a private school; they're, they're not in a conference. Um, we can get into the logistics of it. They even should be in two A, but that's for a different conversation, different time. Uh, but it's it's so you look at their scores, look at their stats, watch their film, and it's really hard to get a grip a grip on on. What we're going to see today, just because they're they're opponents, their their schedule, it's they're playing three A, four A powerhouses, and mm. they're six and three. They got one win against a playoff team, so five of their wins have been against teams four and five or worse. And so I really think it's it, it for me as a, as an announcer, it, it's just just watching it. It's hard to kind of get an idea of who we're going to see today. Yeah, it really is, and you know them being a private school, they just kind of in a lot of ways can control their own destiny. And you yeah. know, there you yeah. look at their strength of schedule. Well, obviously, is the biggest bonus for them because when you're going and playing, you know, looking at their schedule, they're playing Columbia, Breeze Central in their own town, their crosstown mm-hmm. rivals, Effingham, Madison, Macomb, Alton, Marquette. Now, Belleville Altoff Catholic, you know, not to delve too far off, is a favorite to, to win the state title in 1A. And yeah. I look at Belleville Altoff Catholic's schedule, okay, they're a 1A team, but they had seven and 8A teams on their schedules. <sighs> Granite City being one of them that they beat by four touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, so that that's a that was a and heavy Breeze loss did lose to them forty. Yes, forty one twenty two. I mean, so, so you know, but that team, like I said, that Altov team is you know they're they're a bear, you know, and then lost their last game of the year to Mount Zion, another you know four A school that's probably going to make a deep playoff run. So. Um, and I might have my class wrong on Mount Zion. I'm thinking three, four A, four A at 4A. least. So. The the bottom line is this breeze Cent- this breeze modern day excuse me football team plays a very solid schedule a six and three record against a schedule like that is I mean this is a good football team yeah the, I mean the level of competition they're playing week in and week out is without question an advantage to them because they're not seeing yeah you know, I'm just being honest they're not seeing one and eight zero and nine black diamond teams mm-hmm. they're playing they're playing good teams week in week out even. If those teams' record in their conference isn't as good, they're bigger schools. Yeah. They're, you know, they're larger schools, bigger programs. So they are battle tested no matter what. So, you know, that alone is going to give them an advantage going 2A. And, you know, we were talking about off air, Cole, the way the system works, and, you know, we can get a little more in the technicalities. Modern day being a private school or Catholic school, what usually happens is if there are a couple years where they miss the playoffs, they take away what's called a multiplier. So basically what that means is when the mul- when the uh, multiplier is added to these private schools, is kind of a stipulation the IHSA put on because the advantage private schools has have is that there's not a geographical mm-hmm. limit to where players can go. Yep. Meaning, you know, if, if a kid who, let's say, lives in El Dorado wants to go play at John City, we can't do that in, you know, with public yep. schools. Private yep. schools... If they're willing to pay the tuition to go to that school, they can do that. Yeah. So that's the advantage that the Catholic slash private schools have. So because of that, they kind of, you know, that's why Breeze Modern Day is playing a 4A level schedule. Well, if they miss the playoffs, I believe it's two years in a row and two or maybe three, they take away that multiplier. So then they base their postseason schedule on their actual enrollment. So if you look at their actual enrollment, they're 373 students. Now they're playing a two-way playoff schedule. Yep. Kind of the same deal for Belleville Altoff, mm-hmm. the, uh, a powerhouse. They're normally, I mean, they're playing 6, 7A schedule. Yep. Well, if they miss the playoff a couple of years, their multiplier is gone. That's why you see them in 1A. Yep. So those are some huge advantages that can parlay to some of these these schools that you know have a couple down years once they get rolling again. Um, but they will, the longer they make the playoffs, Subsequently, they lose that multiplier, yeah. then they go or they get it back, and, and they so have to go play the four. I believe level. it will be twenty twenty five. Breeze Modern Day yeah. will go back to four A for right. the postseason. Right, so that's kind of the caveat with them. It's you know it's uh, so, but right now they're in just where they're in two A in the playoffs. So with all that said, what does that mean for the Bulldogs? Well, you're playing a, even at six and three, you're playing a a top level if yeah. they were in the black diamond you know they're a jc they're a Sester level football team bottom line yeah and, and i don't i wouldn't say this team is going to be they're not as big as john city right. so you got 
and take that in consideration. Mm-hmm. They run a very different offense than the Indians do. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a, a very comparable team to Cesar Valier, I think. They right. won't throw the ball downfield as much as Cesar did mm-hmm. uh, against us, especially in the second half of that game, if you recall back in week four. Um, but what they what we'll see today from Breeze Monterey, they're going to spread things out. They're going to be in the shotgun, two wide receivers to each side. Uh, it's going to be a lot of jet sweeps, a lot of quick runs out of the shotgun, quarterback runs at the mm-hmm. middle, uh, and quick passes, wide receiver screens. Um, going to be a lot of pressure today on the defensive backs for Carmine, right. Trayton Vickers, Beckhoff, guys like that, uh, to come up and make open field tackles because, you know, Chris, last Friday, Carmine lost by 30, but if you take away three plays in that game, it's a one-score game. Yeah. And so I think it, it's got to be huge for Carmine. Do not let the big plays. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the second half of that game, really, technically we gave up one score to their mm-hmm. offense. The other was a scoop and score, but anyway... It, you know, the thing is, with this type of offense, it does. You you said it exactly, Cole. It puts a lot of pressure on your secondary because when they spread you out, when a, when a team goes four wide that likes to run the ball out of that, the conundrum is your defensive backs have to honor the receivers, yep. meaning if your defensive backs start cheating in, looking in the backfield, if you've got a quarterback or tailback that likes to run, you know, your front seven guys have to do their job. The minute you start committing, more defensive backs to stop the run, well, that's when they can hit you with an open pass. Then you get what's called a hot route, a hot receiver, meaning no one's covering him, and that's where you give up big plays. So it's really the the pressure without question is on your defensive backfield. So how do you, how do you negate that? Well, your D-line has to just be monsters today. They have to really do their job honoring the run, getting pressure, on the quarterback, not making him comfortable because if they are, you know, a run option type team, you just have to come up and play assignment football. You know, you can't create that conundrum for your defensive backs because they got a hard enough job. Yeah, you have to honor those receivers first and foremost. But you know, if 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 they can come up, shed their blocks, do their assignment too, and come up and run support, that helps. But the biggest thing, your front four has to just, you know, because they'll probably. You know, if the Bulldogs go ahead with a five-man front, five down linemen, two linebackers, and the, then just tell the remaining four D-backs D you're man-to-man on your own, it creates even more pressure because those guys, if they do have to come up and commit to a run, let a receiver go, that means someone's open downfield. So it's just, it's everyone has to, it's, it's assignment football. It's different than last week when it's just everyone get up front, get low, make a pile, and just dig your heels in this becomes more everyone has to know their assignment be at the right position at all times defensively i pretty much expect the knights to put 10 11 guys Mm -hmm. in the box i mean they're going to have six down linemen they'll creep in their corners down to the defensive end uh, and really just have one safety over the top and that's your that's your 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 last resort guy um i think that's going to be i i think if this if carmine is going to win this game <clears throat> it's not going to be your 35 33 game 40 30 it's going to be 18 to 14 20 yeah. to 15 it's going to be a game like that because with the way that Breeze plays defense and the way that Carmine has played defense this year um it's for the Bulldogs it's going to be 3 yards in the cloud of dust yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be tough to run the ball today mm-hmm. i think they're going to have to just show as much balance as they've ever have yeah. you know i i really liked that first drive last week, because yeah. we did show some balance, some nice play action passes. Our first touchdown was actually just a little Pollard snuck out in the flats there and caught that first touchdown pass, you know, of the game. And, you know, we threw the ball more than we ran it. Uh, so I think today it's going to have to be a case. Landon Driscoll and the receiving core are going to have to come through at critical times because, you know, if we can get out against a ten man front, and move the ball, hey, it's going to be our day. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that's going to be difficult, knowing our tendencies, and that's what's what playoff football does. I mean, you're, you're seeing someone you haven't played. They haven't seen us in a couple of years. But when they see the bulk of our film and our tendencies, they're like, okay, guys, 10-man front. You know, we're not, we're not letting them run. We're going to force them to throw. And so if that's the case today, now it's just going to become a fact. You know, and I thought our line did a good job of giving Driscoll some time last week. We're just going to have to connect on those routes because there were a lot of open routes last week where there were just some miscommunications, yep. a little bit of overthrows. That can't happen today. You, the ball's got to be on the money. Receivers and quarterback got to be on the same page, and you're going to have to make some of those plays on third and eight, third and nine. You're going to have to convert those because, you know, today 
turning the ball over, miscues, giving up big plays. You know, it just can't happen today. You mentioned third down, and I think back. Uh, I actually watched the film from the Athens game last year just to kind of uh, see a bigger school, bigger opponent, and, and really, I think. In that game, Carmi, it'd be you get a first down here, okay, then a holding call and a sack here at mm-hmm. third and 25. Um, that can't happen today. No. It happened a couple of times last week. We talked all year how Carmi has to play ahead of the chains. Yes, mm-hmm. the, the passing game has gotten better throughout the year. I think Driscoll looked as good last year as he has all year as far as throwing the football, mm-hmm. um, but. Kurt Simon does not have many plays set up for third and twenty-five. No, I, th- no. I think if, if you're Carmi, you, you've got to stay ahead of the chains. You obviously can't shoot yourself in the foot. Can't be uh, committing penalties, holding calls to set you back ten yards. Um, you, you've got to try to get as many positive plays as you can on first and second down. Absolutely, you know, it, and we saw it in the last couple of weeks. You just said it, Cole. I mean, third and twos penalties are turning into third and longs. You, you can't put yourself in those situations mm-hmm. today. And I think going back to last year in that Athens, Athens game. On the flip side, we had several situations where we had Athens fourth and five, yeah. fourth and eight. Yeah. I think even we had like a third and twenty, mm-hmm. and couldn't get them off the field. You you've got to get when you have a team fourth and eight, fourth and nine today. You've got to get them off the field. Yeah. You can't give life to to excellent football teams. You just can't. So the Bulldog defense, if third and seventeen last week against Johnson City, I know I go back to it. You got them on their 30-yard line. That play was a difference in the game. It, it yeah. was the game because it was still a one-score game. Third and 17, they're backed up on their 30-yard line. You you get that stop, they're punting. And next thing you know, it's a 66-yard touchdown. That can't happen today. Yeah. You got you got Breeze, third and 17. You got them fourth and nine. You got to get the stop. You just you can't give teams like that life. So I, I think that's just as critical today, too, for Carmi. And one more thing as far as today and what Carmi has to do is – you can't find you. You can't fall down two, three scores. You no. know, you look back to no. last week and and Carmine was down twenty four to six at the half. You know, if you get one score early in the third, it's a different story. But it it's, it takes a lot mm-hmm. against a team that runs the ball a lot as well to to make up for these two, three score deficits. And and if Carmine wants to have a chance to win this game today, you can't fall down two or three scores in the second quarter. No, you you have to take advantage of every, every opportunity. You've got to keep the game close, especially that first half, because like like we said last week if we get JC off the field on that third and 17 it was still a 14 to 6 14 game 14 to 6 at that point and if we just keep the ball long enough to get to halftime a one possession game then we come out of the locker room and play the way we did that game's close yeah. you know and then you you know mentally you're a different team but if you get down early if you give them big plays and this breeze team like like you said Cole a spread team that loves to run jet sweeps quarterback options misdirection it's assignment football. Your defensive backs can't come in and crowd the line of scrimmage because they got to honor the split receivers. So it's up to your seven guys in the box to do their job. So if Carmine can early in the game, I, I think that's the key, keep their confidence defensively. If we can get them, the best case scenario is if we win the toss, defer, come on, they get the ball. If we, if we can hold them their first drive and just keep this game within a score, then – in the second half, then it's mentally it, it's it's different. You know, like I said last year, Athens. I think we were actually up in the first quarter of yeah, score, and then, then the floodgates just open that second quarter. That's when they were converting the fourth and nines and the third. And, you know, if your defense can make those plays today, keep this a close game, then you know, then you're going in the second half mentally. It's a lot different. Then you're believing. Then you're thinking, okay, we can win this thing. But it, the key is. You, you can't wait till the third quarter to play your best football. You got to come out of the gate. You, you can't give up the big plays. You got to keep it close. You just you just got to battle. Kickoff for today is set for one o'clock between Carmi and Breeze Modern Day. The Taylor Reich here pregame show will begin at twelve forty. If the Bulldogs are able to win today, uh, it looks like it will be a rematch with Johnson City. They are the three seed. They are hosting the fourteen seed Auburn. Uh, unless an upset happens there, uh, the winner of today's game will play Johnson City. If Breeze Modern Day wins, then Johnson City will go to Breeze. So, uh, if you look at second, possibly third round matchups, um, very interesting what can happen mm-hmm. but again if the bulldogs win today they will travel to probably johnson city uh next week and so they uh, auburn by the way if for those who don't know that is uh carmine white county 
tennis coach Chris Cordy's you know, alma mater. That was going to be. Yeah. I, I was going to have a trivia question for you. Chris. Uh, I, I ruined gonna, the trivia. I'm I, sorry. You, I ruined you, it. You I did, just ruined you, it. But, I'm sorry. You, you were thinking ahead, but yes, <laughs> no, that is where uh, yeah. Coach Chris Cordy went to high school. Yeah. They're, they're Auburn. They are playing. John City today. We'll take a short break. We come back. We will look at the other playoff matchups going around, uh, going on around the area here in the first round of the IHSA playoffs this weekend. It's a Saturday morning sports show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, AM 1460. It's a Saturday morning sports show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROI, AM 1460. Cole Carter and Chris Myers with you. J.C. Tinsley across the hallway getting us on the air. Reminder, today at 1 o'clock, the Carmine White County Bulldogs will take on the Breeze Modern Day Knights in the first round of the IHSA football playoffs. We will look around the area at some other uh, playoff games going on today. Last night, Casey Westfield took down Toledo Cumberland in 1A, uh, the 6 11 matchup. Casey Westfield won that one 49 to 7. Cesar Valier will host Carrollton today at 1 o'clock. Red Hill, they are traveling to the one seed. Uh, Camp Point Central, that's today at 2 o'clock. Red Hill was able to sneak in with a 5-4 and four record. I believe that is all of the uh, nearby teams in 1A. Looking at 2A now, of course, the Bulldogs and Breeze modern day today at 1 o'clock. Johnson City will face Auburn at 2 o'clock. NJC uh, Lawrenceville will host Vandalia today at 2 o'clock. Uh, Redbud, Redbud was able to defeat Chester last night in an offensive shootout. Seven nothing. They won that first. What, was, what were the okay. seeds there? What was uh, uh, Redbud was five. Chester was twelve. Okay, so Chester was a five and four. Yeah, Chester okay. was five okay. and four. Redbud yeah. uh, wins that game seven nothing. Mm. Um, Athens, who Carmine played last year, they host Southwestern in the first round today at one o'clock. Nashville will host Pena in the eight nine matchup, and then Arthur Lovington at Wood Hammond, the overall uh, one seed in the South two A, will host four and five Quincy Notre Dame. So I mm. believe there were. Five, four or five, four and five teams make it this year. So all five and four teams made it in, in Illinois. Uh, there were a few four and five teams able to sneak it. Doesn't happen very often, but uh, had to be uh, one based of those, on points and schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and but uh, it's it's rare enough that all five win teams get in. Just how the numbers play out. Um, and National Two A. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go point. ahead. Yeah, oh, Na- I was just going to say in my thought process. Nashville is Two A. Yeah. Okay, they played. I was looking at the brackets. We were talking before we went in here. This Shelbyville squad, mm-hmm. which could be an opponent later in the two A yep. bracket. They're the two seed in the Nashville, South. if I'm correct, beat Shelbyville by three scores last me, game of the me, year. Give me a look. I can look it up. Chris. Okay, that's yeah, what give, I was yeah, thinking. Give me a heads up. All right, go right, go right ahead. Live, <laughs> but I do know. Live. I do know they are. Uh, they do face each other. And yeah, Nashville won that game. That was what that was last Friday. Yeah, uh, forty twenty two. So this Nashville, Nashville that, team, that was Shelbyville's first loss. Right. So <laughs> Nashville might be a team to look out for. Shelbyville at eight and one. You know, that's some things can get interesting. Yeah. You know, usually second, third round things get real interesting. Uh, but those are the two A matchups. And again, if Carmi wins today, they will play the winner of Johnson City and Auburn. That game, if Carmi wins, they'll be on the mm-hmm. road no matter what. But either at Johnson City or uh, traveling up to Auburn. Look. Looking at some 3A area matchups, um, it will be uh, Mount Carmel will host Benton in the 4-13 matchup. DuCoin, they are the one seed uh, in 2A South after that big win over yeah. Murfreesboro last week. They host Monticello in the 1-16 match in 3A. Uh, Fairfield, they snuck in at 5-4. and four. They travel to 9-0 and Greenville today. Mm. Uh, odds obviously not in their favor, but mm. they were able to get an upset playoff win last year. Uh, they travel to Greenville today. Uh, in 4A, there were a couple area schools bump up to 4A, including Harrisburg. They will travel to Carterville today. Harrisburg actually upset Carterville. Carterville a couple of weeks ago. They're looking to do the same thing today. Murfreesboro will host Taylorville in the 215 matchup. Uh, Mount Zion, who defeated Breeze Modern Day last week, they host Effingham today. Uh, Breeze Central, another opponent for Breeze Modern Day, they host Cahokia today. So that is all of the area playoff matchups going on in Southern Illinois. Uh, and again, the Bulldogs at home today against. Uh, Breeze modern day. One thing I learned last week, Chris, you talk about the 256 teams that make the playoffs. Obviously, if you win your five games, you're a qualifier. If you win your six, you clinch. Uh, I learned that there are a couple of those public school leagues up in Chicago that I believe, and, and don't quote me on this, but if you don't finish in the top two in your league, you don't make the playoffs. 
Mm-hmm. Are, are, you, are, you, are you caught up on, on how that I works up there? That. I okay. haven't heard that. So, and again, Maybe. those are 7A, 7A 8A schools right. up there. Uh, but you could you could win six games and technically not get in, depending on where you lie in, in your conference up and this there. This is where if we had downtown Toby Brown sitting oh, right here, we, could, we could get the answer if he's <laughs> listening. Maybe he'll text us. But I, I don't know if the rules are different for the public schools, Chicago public schools, as far as play, if they have their own it's, play out, I'm trying, I, I should have brushed up yeah, on that a little more, yeah. but it's a little well, different animal and with them. People probably really don't care as much as we do, but right, I just thought, right. I thought yeah. it was a little tidbit. That, yeah. you know, not, not everybody gets in. It's a little yeah. bit different for uh, your Chicago schools right. up north. But, right. you know, Chris, just kind of run through this list as mm-hmm. far as what other playoffs ma- playoff matchups uh, intrigue me. I'll give you a second to pull those up on your phone. But, um, to really see Johnson City, you know, obviously Auburn is a five and four team, mm-hmm. uh, but they play in that really good conference that Athens plays in. Mm-hmm. Um, Johnson City, that's probably going to be one of their, if not the toughest team they face this year. Obviously, they played Sesser, lost to them in overtime, but you just you never know what to expect from those teams up by Sham- in, in the uh, Springfield area that come down here. Uh, that could be an interesting matchup today in Johnson City. Yeah, it really could, you know, because you pointed out, I mean. Bottom line, you get Springfield North, there's just a lot of good teams, a lot of competition. It just gets a little more rugged for whatever reason from that area to the north. It's just it's just different. <laughs> it just is. So, you know, I, I think uh, Johnson City and, and, you know, knowing their coaching staff and the talent they got, I don't think they're going to be sleepwalking today. Mm-hmm. But they know, even at 9-0 and or 8-1, and a 5-4 and team, that's played in a tough conference. Solid schedule is no, no one you take lightly. I mean, in the playoffs, you take no one lightly. So, but I, I do think Johnson City, just what they're, just how talented they are at the skill positions. And when I say skill positions, I'm talking defensive end, quarterback, fullback, linebacker. You know, defensively, they're down linemen. They're just, you know, they're just a steamroller and. You know they're they're going to be a load for anybody. I I looking at that two eight bracket. It just it just depends. You know not to look too far ahead. We're all believing and hoping that Carmi goes to for a rematch next week mm-hmm. against Johnson City. You know, but if if they do, you know, make a deep run, say they get to the quarterfinal at some point. You know, I think looking at the brackets, it might be favored to be a Shelbyville. I mean, and yeah. Shelbyville. Losing by three scores to Nashville, that might be okay. Johnson City's got a shot to get to the semis again. But by then, that's where you're facing an Athens team. And by everything, just looking at their schedule this year, that Athens team is They're really good. the real deal. Yeah. I mean, they are they are loaded for Bear this year. So that could get interesting. And uh, I, I go back to that 1A. You know, it's just so interesting to me. Um, you know, I, I had said last week, ooh, Sester went 1A. That might be a little easier for him. Well, <laughs> not necessarily no, because no. I got to look in and I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. They're going to have to, you know, if they keep, if they advance, you know, provide they advance second, maybe third round, they're going to see a Casey team, a Casey Westfield team yep. that played Mount Carmel to a three point game. Yeah. You know, so people said, yeah, Mount Carmel missed some opportunities. Well, there were others that said, well, Casey missed some opportunities. Mm-hmm. But bottom line, you're, one a school you go into mount carmel on their field and take them to a three-point game and mount carmel team that finished eight and one you're you're a good football team granted casey westfield they they won last night so mm -hmm. assuming the the uh higher seed wins they'll have to travel to undefeated greenville Mm -hmm. and beat them next week in order just to see sesser if sesser advances that would be a quarterfinal very good point yeah Yeah. and and that could very well happen or it could be greenville but you know yeah i there was just a lot of good teams in that one. And like I said, the big thing, that Belleville Altoff, let's go back. If you can pull up their schedule, call. I thought I had them. Let me see if I can find them again. I wanted to find Bill. Here they are. Belleville Altoff Catholic. Their enrollment is 288, 288 students. Here was their schedule. Now, I don't know their first one. The St. Louis Burroughs. That may have been a private school. Beat them 49 to 13. Decatur St. Teresa. Beat them 46 46- to 13 centralia okay that's a lot bigger school yeah. 61 to 33 they did lose to o'fallon 34 to 19 o'fallon's a 5a school yeah probably a 5 6a school they beat alton marquette 42 nothing they beat collinsville 38 to 27 big school breeze modern day the team we'll see today they beat 41 to 22 granite city which granite city is you know didn't have a great season but again that's a 5 6a school beat them 53 to 14 
And then I don't know the enrollment of this Pecatonica school. They beat 41 to 18. But the bottom line is, I mean, that's their schedule. Yeah. The, I mean, they're they're playing those kind of teams, those size schools week in and week out. And other than O'Fallon, they were dominating everybody. So, I mean, you think 1A, small school, no. It's, yeah. it, that's, that's a tough one. Belleville, Belleville yeah. Altoff, they are the four seed in the in the 1A South bracket. So if mm-hmm. if Assessor or a Casey Westfield was to see them, it wouldn't be until the semifinals. Right, so, right. So, um, you know, I don't know, Camp Point Central, they're undefeated. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's them and Belleville in, in the northern part of the southern part of the bracket, if that yeah. makes any sense. But yeah. um, it very well you know, could be Sester Valier mm-hmm. or, or KC, Greenfield, not sure about them. They're undefeated. But uh, you, you, just, you just never really right. know, Chris. And especially you talk, you know, they split Illinois up in north and south, and you have the north part and the south part of the north and south. And, the the south the really southern part and the middle part of the state is so different you just you never know you know this team might be five and four but they play like you said five a six a schools and it's just um, you can never really predict who's going to win these games because an ino down here is a lot different than a five and four up north it is and, you know, and it wouldn't be interesting though if they did it one through thirty two but it you don't do sixteen north and south you just the number one up north. Be a lot of travel. Plays the thirty-two. Yeah, I think they do it for the travel <laughs> yeah, purposes. Well, and they and that's what but, yeah. uh, I believe four A and up. They don't yeah. they don't do north and south. It's right. just everybody for themselves. And they making... actually the IHSA ruled. I want to say right around COVID time that when the playoffs resumed after the COVID season that they were going to do one through thirty-two. Mm-hmm. Gas prices go up. I kid you <laughs> not. And they said to to for. for Better gas. They're going to keep it one through sixteen, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't believe they've decided to change that yet. But that very well could be a case. Mm-hmm. And 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 that's in and, and that instance, Chris. If you're a five and four team, so let's say Fairfield goes five and four, you're going to Chicago week yeah. one of the playoffs, yeah. and that's <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that's a haul, obviously. Yeah, that's, yeah. And so I I think that is a wise thing they did then. Yeah. Thinking of it that way, you know, because like I said, it was just a what if. What yeah. if they did one through thirty two? Yeah, you better save up save up some gas money. Yeah. The first weekend yeah. of the Illinois football playoffs going on uh, throughout the day today. Again, a couple of games last week, but today is, is the real real meat of the playoff games, including. Carmel White County at home today against Breeze Modern Day. That will be at 1 o'clock. The Taylor Wright here pregame show will kick off at 1240. We'll take our final break of the day. We come back. We'll run through our Terrible 10 Pick'ems and our national sports segment right here on the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROY, AM 1460. Welcome back to the Saturday Morning Sports Show on 97.3 WRUL, 93.3 WROY, AM 1460, Cole Carter, Chris Myers with you. J.C. Tinsley across the hallway getting us on the air. Reminder, today at 1 o'clock, the Bulldogs are at home uh, taking on Breeze Modern Day. Looks like the weather's going to hold off. At first, mm-hmm. thought it was going to be cold and rainy all day. Uh, I think the rain's going to hold off to later on this evening. So uh, if you can make out to the game... Come on out, support the Bulldogs, but if you can't, we'll have all the action for you here on WRUL as well as the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. The Taylor Wright here pregame show will begin at 1240. So we'll take a look at our Terrible 10 Pick'ems for today. Last week, Chris beat me for the first time this year, I believe. Uh, <laughs> Blind squirrel finds an acorn. Yay. <laughs> Chris went 6-4. and four. I went 5-5 five and five, uh, in last week's Terrible 10. I just I missed I missed a lot of, of, of mm. close games. I had USC winning. Uh, yeah, they lost by two. I had the Colts winning. They lost on a last-second touchdown. Uh, so a couple, couple games go this uh, the other <laughs> way, and, and, and I get past it. But I'll, I'll, I'll let Chris uh, and enjoy this one while I can. But yeah. five, <laughs> <Only five>, one. <laughs> five college games today, yeah. uh, five NFL matchups. Tomorrow, Chris, we'll start with you. A big one in the Pac-12, number 8, Oregon, at number 13, Utah. I'm taking the Ducks okay. in that one. I just like their coach, his moxie. He's uh, They had that close one that they you know could have won a couple weeks ago against uh, Washington. Washington. Yeah. But I, I like the Ducks in that one. I, I want to pick the Ducks, but I think Utah playing at home. You mm-hmm. just took down Caleb Williams and USC. Uh, Oregon, you know, I know they had that loss a couple of weeks ago, but they're playing good football. I'm going to go with the upset here. Give me Utah at home against Oregon. Number 20, Duke at number 18, Louisville. Uh, Duke had a loss last week against Florida State. Louisville uh, lost to Pitt last week, actually, uh, there in Pittsburgh. But 
I think the Cardinals are going to bounce back. Give me Louisville. I'm going to agree with you. I think you know Duke's quarterback suffered an injury at the end of that Notre Dame game, and he's still not 100. Yeah. percent If him not 100, percent they're just not the same team. So I'll take Louisville. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and the Colorado Buffaloes. Oh. They travel to 23 UCLA. There was a lot of hype with Colorado mm. early in the year. They played that meet of the Pac-12 in the middle part of their schedule. Um, that was some injuries, but they're they're due for a big win against a ranked opponent. I'm going. They're going to beat UCLA on the road today. I just can't do it. I think it, that loss to Stanford was ugly. I thought had they just finished that game against Stanford, then I'd have a little more confidence in them. And again, it's year one, yeah. so you, you know, Coach Prime, it's, it's year one. He's got to fix that defense. I think UCLA at home will go ahead and finish that okay. one out. Okay. Uh, number six, Oklahoma at Kansas. Oklahoma had a scare last week with uh, UCF at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a two-point win for them. Um, I think it will be a close game. Kansas has obviously turned their program around so much in the past few years, but I will take the Sooners pulling this one out on the road. I'm going to do that, too. I just don't think the Jayhawks have quite enough. And, you know, I, I was like, Shocked at that score last week too, but I forgot UCF's coach is Gus Malzahn, who was at Auburn yes, when they did win the yeah. title yep. that one year with Cam Newton, I believe. Uh, okay. Battle of unranked teams: Houston travels to Kansas State. Houston almost beat uh, Texas last week at home. Yeah, that was another one. I was like, "What's yeah, going on?" Very now? surprised by that one. Uh, I will take um, the Cougars here on the road. Give me Houston. I will go ahead and see at Oklahoma State, Kansas State, or Kansas State. Excuse me. Mm. Well, that's a tough one. I'm gonna go ahead and take K State at home. Okay. Yeah. Go with Kansas State at home. All right. Five NFL games going on tomorrow. Uh, the Giants are the home team here, but they host their uh, their oh, roommate, the, the yeah. New York Jets. Jets at the Giants. Um, I'm going to go with the Jets here, technically on the road. I am too. I, I just think they're starting to play some decent football. They're surprising some people. You know, Robert Sela, their head coach, a defensive guy. I'm going to I'm going to J E T S it all day. All right, we're both going to pick the Jets here. Uh, NFC North matchup: Vikings travel to Green Bay. Vikings have had a couple of big uh, wins, including against uh, against your geez. Niners back uh, on Monday. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, the Vikings are going to keep it rolling here. Give me Minnesota on the road. Uh, I'll do the same thing because I have to because they are the better team, but I'm still a little bitter. But, yeah, I'll take the Vikings. Packers with a rough loss last week mm. against the Broncos, and I picked them too. Yeah. Uh, Rams at the Cowboys. Um, let's see. I will go with Dallas here at home. I'm picking the Rams just because I don't want Dallas to win. So <laughs> I'm probably going to be wrong. It's, it's yeah. going to take a lot for you yeah. to pick Dallas I know at I'm any point have a this lot year. Of <laughs> messages from Cowboy fans, but yeah. So. Uh, Cleveland, the Browns travel to Seattle to face the Seahawks. Who you got here, Chris? Mm. If it was at Cleveland, I'd take Cleveland. But Seattle at home is still it's still a tough place to play. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Seahawks. And I don't think Deshaun Watson's going to play, but uh, yeah. their, their backup, P.J. Walker, has won them yeah. two games. So yeah. I think it will be a good game, but I'm going to go Seattle here at home as well. Uh, last game for our terrible 10 pick the Atlanta Falcons at the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Tannehill sounds like he's not going to play. Uh, despite that, though, give me Tennessee. Same here. Every time I, I pick the Falcons, they just – Lay an egg, no pun intended. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the Titans. Very up and down team. Yeah, they, they look just, like a playoff contender yeah. one week, then the next they right. lose to Washington. Right. But uh, there's our terrible ten pickums for this week. Again, Chris beat me last week. He went six and four. I went five and five. All right, Chris. Any last words before we hit the road for the day? Before today's big playoff game, I just want to say if it's if you love high school football, a Saturday afternoon like this is just what you live for. Small town. You know, these kids have worked hard all year. Football, like what separates it, I've said this before, from a lot of the other sports, and may I may be a little biased because it's my sport, love it, <laughs> love the game, is the work the kids put in week in and week out. Your goal is to make the postseason. You have to earn a postseason berth. It's not everybody's in, no matter what. you got to earn your way there. This team has just been dealt unfortunate blows with injuries. You know, Caleb Sievers and Eli Bryant, Going down were two significant blows to this yep. team. But no matter what, these boys just seem to find ways to regroup. I believe Beck Huff is back this week yep. from injury. I think Driscoll was a little banged up, but he's, 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 he's playing, playing today. Yep. A tough kid, you know. But just what I love about this group of young men is they just they're resilient. 
you know they've never just hung their heads and saying uh what else can go on they just regroup they fight you know they they play hard they're great kids you know and and they love football this sport tests you in so many ways it tests you physically it tests it tests you mentally you know when the season starts you're in 100 degree weather Mm -hmm. if you're in a deep season run you may be playing in 35 degrees and cold you know you're battling the elements it's physical you're playing through pain you're playing through injury sometimes it's just what these young men do and the coaching staff week in and week out i think if your community you're proud that you a Saturday afternoon, your team's still playing. Absolutely. So I hope everybody that can comes out. Let's fill the bleachers with maroon and white. Support these kids. Love playoff atmosphere. You know, if you love the game, and again, high school football, there's nothing that should give you more chills than a Saturday afternoon in the fall in the postseason. So proud of this team and just hope for great things today. Absolutely. Again, kickoff is set for 1 o'clock. The Taylor I Care pregame show will come your way at 1240. So, big thanks to J.C. Tinsley across the hallway getting us on the air. For Chris Myers, I'm Cole Carter. Have a great weekend.